my friends, welcome back to the channel. So I noticed that you are, were really kind of into the story of Through the Espos. So I decided let's dig up another maybe not so popular Norwegian true crime case. And here it is again. Um, I was quite reluctant whether should I post this story or not, because quite a lot of information is missing and most of it is basically in Norwegian, so I was quite struggling, but still I decided let's do this. I'm gonna tell you the story, I'm gonna tell you the fact that are published in some newspapers and articles uh, that I found, and let's try to figure out what actually happened, because there are still some doubts and I'm gonna give you a trigger warning because like again it's a true crime case it actually happened and it was quite brutal and there are still so many questions and answer so let's start and just a heads up another thing I wanted to mention I do not have any pleasure in making these videos I'm looking at it more like from the perspective of curiosity and uh, to raise awareness about things happening around you, even though sometimes uh, things look safe, they are not always like that. Um, this is also like uh, to remind you always to take care about yourself, do not talk to strangers and if you feel unsafe, leave the place and also to parents to talk to their kids about safety uh, wherever they're going. And today's case we are going to discuss is the case of John Ail of Bjorn. Uh, that's uh, an 18-year boy who went one evening to a party and didn't return back. So what happened to him? It was January 1996. Link cited a small village in Tromsø, Finnmark County with a population of around 800 people. 18-year-old John was just another happy teenager who enjoyed his life, which also included parties and meeting other people who shared his interests. So we all know that feeling, you know, like at the age of 18, the whole world is by your feet, you want to do everything, all the life is ahead of you, except for the fact that for John it was completely different because his life was interrupted at the age of 18 and he will never know what his future would look like. So as I mentioned, there are not so many facts and information about this case, but I try to figure out as much as I can. Uh, and I'm gonna lay out all the facts that I know in this video and maybe all together we will try to figure out what actually happened. So as always, uh, your comments are very welcome down there and I would be really happy to know your opinion. On January 21st, 1996, John went to some home party after which he didn't return home. The last sighting of him was the next morning in some local grocery shop uh, and this grocery shop was located in Linksade. And by saying John went missing, I mean there was no trace at all uh, about him. Like after seeing him in this grocery shop, nobody know where did he go, where did he disappear like. He just disappeared in the thin air. So I did manage actually to find out what were the possible options the police and parents were considering where the John actually disappeared. But the fact is that a little bit over one year passed and in 1997 they actually managed to find the body of the deceased John. John was found on a ski trail a little bit outside the town and after examining the place some gruesome things were discovered like around his body and uh, uh, with his body what had happened and this led to several speculations about what actually happened and if John was maybe killed. First of all, the boy's head was separated from the body and the head was around 40 meters away from it. So this looked quite suspicious. Secondly, there was another thing like quite weird, but it can still be discussed if it's like from natural sources or on purpose. Uh, nearby uh, his head, they found also a cross made of branches and it was said that the pointed end of this cross was kind of pointing out to the body, like where the body is located. So some believe that all of this was staged with purpose. 
Um, but still, mm, not many people do believe that, and also police do not believe that there is something intentional in this kind of staging of the body and this cross. And the people who do believe that this cross was actually with a purpose there on that place also believe that uh, John became a victim of some kind of uh, satanic uh, ritual that was performed on him. I also read in some blogs that there was even like a TV show where they invited the psychic who was kind of confirming that it was a satanic um, ritual performed on that place with John, but later on it was discarded and also police wasn't even looking into that. So after this satanic ritual uh, option was discarded and uh, the police was in, uh, had investigated the place uh, of uh, John's death, uh, they claimed that his death was actually accidental and that the poor boy actually froze to death in that place. But here I have some questions because I don't really get this. Like, what kind of accident was this? Like, the boy lost his head, so how could it happen? I do not actually see the logic there, but I don't know, like, maybe it was like some wild animals who bit his head off after his death. I mean, he was lying there for more than a year. So, but again, I don't see the logic and the connection there. So maybe it's just me, but it's quite weird. And the same feeling and i'm sure even stronger was from his parents like who were looking for their son for more than a year and then they found him dead and they just simply refused to believe that it was an accident and he just froze there to death and i totally kind of understand them it, I, it is like a devastating experience and i just simply like oh, i cannot imagine what they are feeling and because parents did not actually believe that this was an accident, uh, they paid a private detective, his name was Tore Sandberg, and uh, later on this private detective actually made some breakthroughs in this case. It was year 2007 when a Tore, a private detective uh, who was paid by his parents, uh, turns the case upside down uh, and he has some new evidence, new witness. And with all of this evidence that this witness gave him, he went to the police and because of that, the case was reopened again. The witness who reached out to Tore actually told that John was killed in an abandoned military shed uh, that was outside Linkside. We do not know the person's name and who was this person who gave this information and it's quite logic because uh, it's important to keep the safety of witnesses but allegedly also this person named the person who killed John in that shed and the police of course immediately reacted they went to this old military shed to search for some biological material that could prove uh, that somebody had been killed there more specifically that John was killed there and also maybe to prove that the person that was named by the witness is guilty in killing John but then I found and another interesting thing about this witness who was kind of making this breakthrough in this case I found out that actually the police had already uh, talked to him several times in relation to this John's disappearance and his case and he had never mentioned all of these facts that he just simply mentioned uh, after so many years like in 2007 so it was quite suspicious so why didn't he tell it before uh, why he decided to talk about it a little bit later. I mean, it could be the case that he was afraid to come out, but then again, it's quite tricky, I think. Uh, and just a side note, I'm not accusing anyone, like in lying or whatever. I'm just stating out the facts and thinking out loudly. So if I offend somebody, I beg your pardon. I'm just like discussing. This is like the purpose of this channel. Three technicians searched the building for three days, but found no signs of blood. If this had been a crime scene, today's technology would have found traces of blood, even after so many years. We have previously not believed that this is a murder case. That is also my assessment today. However, this does not mean that the police do not take the new information seriously, said the chief. But still, parents didn't give up. 
uh, they hired another private detective. They still refused to believe that John's death was an accident and he froze to death. John's father, his name was Shell Bjorn, I hope I pronounced it correctly, he had always been convinced that his son uh, was killed and this wasn't an accident. Even if no trace of blood has been found, it does not mean that it is not a crime scene, said Shell Bjorn, father of John. Father's theory was actually quite interesting in my opinion. He was mentioning something related to drugs. He said that he believes that his son might have been killed because he was a strong opponent of drug use and maybe something happened that made him hide away from this party and it was kind of related to drugs, which kind of makes sense in my opinion. So this is basically all of the facts that I managed to find about this case, which looks quite triggering, it looks quite weird, and there are so many things that just simply do not stick together, and there are so many questions that we cannot actually answer. So number one I wanted to talk about was the party that he was attending uh, the night before. I think this party was actually quite neglected because I believe that quite many answers to why John disappeared could be found in that party. Because I have this suspicion that everything actually started there. Even if we do believe that uh, John's death was an accident and he froze to death, uh, the thing what happened in this party could be the reason why he actually decided to go so far away from the town and why this all afterwards happened. Did he get in some kind of argument, maybe fight, maybe he was so intoxicated that he didn't actually understand what he was doing? And maybe, like, his father is uh, right, maybe all of this was related to drugs and you don't get the drugs just, like, simply on the street. Most probably it could have happened in the party and maybe some people just knew that uh, John is so anti-drugs and maybe as a joke they sipped him some kind of drugs in his drinks and this is the result why he left the party, you know, like again intoxicated with drugs or maybe, you know, like young people sometimes get crazy maybe John was kind of there to try the drugs and he decided like, what the heck, let's do it and if he was intoxicated or under the drugs, it would make sense that he actually went out of the town by himself because he wasn't like really into himself and understanding what he's really doing. So this is why I actually believe that many things could have been more clearer if we would have a chance to look more into details about the party that he was attending. Like there might be some people who saw him, he could who could give some kind of uh, information about uh, how he looked on that night, was he maybe depressed or uh, maybe he was acting weirdly, you know? You understand what I'm saying here, right? So what are your thoughts about this party thing? Write down in comments. Now the second thing that seems quite confusing and I would like to discuss more in details is this shooting in this abandoned military shed uh, as said by this witness. So I do not actually quite intend to believe that but anyways, uh, you know, it might happen, you know, sometimes young people uh, get crazy, they get a gun and then they start to play with it and some bad things happen, not intentionally, but they just happened. Or maybe it was intentional, you know, we never know. And maybe whatever happened, they shot John and afterwards they tried to hide the traces of this incident or maybe mm, intended killing. And this is why John's body was somewhere outside the town because they wanted to hide it. But again, too many answer, unanswered questions, too many speculations. We cannot say that this could have happened like that because I don't know, like that witness was the only person who kind of said that something happened in that shed. Can we believe him? How do you think? And another thing I wanted to discuss, if the shooting actually took place, where did the bullets go? Like, 
the, the police didn't find anything in the shed and also I didn't find in any sources that there were some signs uh, that John was shot like um, they didn't find bullets in his body they didn't si didn't find any like injuries that looked like he had been shot so it also kind of adds up to my suspicion that this actually didn't happen like in this military shed and again the witness who said who informed uh, everyone about this military shed and the supposed killing uh, in it so that person must be quite weird just to like randomly invent the story like what was the reason of that was he like a little bit mental or something because i don't know it also sounds weird like a normal person wouldn't invent something like that because it's like seriously he's just lying to the police to private investigators something doesn't stick up here And like the official thing that everyone said, like uh, he froze to death, it could be, but still, I'm kind of suspicious about the fact that his head was off. Like I mentioned maybe like wild animals or something, but still it looks quite weird for me. Um, and why so far from the city? Like maybe he even was like trying to run away from someone, you know? This is why he ended up there. And I think another suspicious thing is that some people actually saw him the next day after the party in the local grocery shop, which was actually in the town. So it doesn't add up like if something happened in the party and that was the reason why he went away and froze to death somewhere outside the city, like let's say even intoxicated or whatever happened or maybe running away. No, they saw him the next morning in the city, so that thing that happened to him happened after that morning when he was seen in this grocery shop. Huh? So if he was actually there in this grocery shop next morning after this party, then maybe something happened on his way home. Like maybe he was kidnapped, then maybe something gruesome happened to him and then they got rid of his body somewhere outside the city and this actually makes more sense than him going away by himself and then dying there just randomly without a reason and then frozen to death uh, you know there are so many options that we can discuss and also another thing that i didn't find is uh some kind of uh, information about whether they found any traces of alcohol or drugs in John's body. I couldn't find anything about that. So it's just like a dead end. So the official conclusion is that he just died from an accident and froze to death. But um, I think it smells quite suspicious here. So I would be really happy to know your thoughts about this case. I know it's not so much information that you can actually conclude something, but still it would be interesting to have some kind of discussion down there in the comment section. So hopefully see you there and uh, let's just talk about it. This is it for me today. Uh, I hope you found this story intriguing and interesting enough. And I truly, truly pray for John's parents to finally find some kind of peace in their hearts and uh, uh, something that could uh, explain the John's death for sure. So without doubts that they know what happened to him. And uh, yes, so as always at the end of the video, I'm going to wish you stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe and uh, see you next time.